here at our another pod out here at our 11 o'clock. So we've seen quite a few whales out here uh, this morning. And that's the secret, folks, is to know which pod that are, well, we're going to move to. So, you excited? Very excited about going That's good. Yeah, happy birthday, Mum. Thank you.
I've got another big pot of wild up to the north, about another mile or two at our 11 o'clock, but we're not watching them just yet. We're still going to assess this pod, folks. We'll give the, we, we give a pod a chance to see what they're going to do at the moment on timing how long they're under the water. We call that their downtime. And then we'll just assess that to what, what they do when they hit the surface, whether they just take a few breaths and disappear again. Or some of the whales get friendly or some of the whales do surface activities. So we've got a backup pod, looks like another two or three whales up to the north a bit further. But it's only been like three minutes since we spotted these guys last. So we'll give them another three to five minutes depending. But from a distance, they've been coming back up to the surface about every four or five minutes. So we are expecting to see this pod again very shortly. And I'm thinking we're much closer now. So these whales that we were looking at at a fair distance should be quite close to the boat when they pop up this time. And once again, probably anywhere from the 11 o'clock around to like the one o'clock. So it's sort of out in front of us here. Three to ten minutes, depending okay. on what. I missed that. Yeah, just, just, depend, <laughs> just depending on who knows what. <clears throat> I've got no idea what makes them stay under bumble or shorter. Yeah. I don't always hear Now this is not unusual. Well, watch this, this is a perfectly normal start to a tour. We've got some whales here. We're just assessing the pod. We're seeing, uh, that's about five minutes they've been under now. Watching them from a distance, they weren't doing five minute downtimes. Maybe a bit shorter, but what we'll do is we'll just hang here. We're gonna see when they pop up. It should be very shortly, I'm thinking. Another minute or so. And then we'll push over a little stay. closer to them and say hello. The whole idea is just to assess them to get a bit closer every time they pop up. More whales out here at our another pod out here at our 11 o'clock. So we've seen quite a few whales out here uh, this morning. And that's the secret, folks, is to know which pod that are, well, we're going to move to. So we'll, we'll wait We'll wait a bit longer and see what these guys are up to. I wonder if when the boat comes, whether they stay under water. Yeah, they might just
bunch of things I like to do as well. Put those first behind me. Now I'm guesstimating there a mile and a half. So that gives me distance. on me then. So, okay, yeah, where we just sort of spotted them from. So now I'm heading to them and I've got a distance here. Of how far I've oh, right in front. See what the what sort of downtimes we're going to get from this pod. 
in at this stage. You're out on our right hand side, you're probably somewhere around the one o'clock mark. Right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alrighty guys, that was pretty good guesstimating. There they are, just for the 11 o'clock. Haven't traveled too far. One, two, 
So we've got a whale, there's obviously the whales that were at our five o'clock are trying to catch up with these whales that were at our two o'clock because we've got a footprint right beside us. So that whale's accelerated and he's cranking it up to catch up with these ones that are that are swimming right sort of with us there. And that was a great surface time guys. We had a um, really good look at that pod then. And Now these humpback whales folks are just an amazing creature. Just to swim to the Gold Coast it's 5,000 kilometres from Antarctica folks. So these whales that we're with, we don't know how much further north they've actually travelled. But what we do know is they're going to have to swim back to Antarctica from here. So that's 10,000 kilometres that these whales that we're visiting right now will swim this winter to come up here to breed. It is documented as one of the longest animal migrations in the history of the planet and uh, that's how dedicated these whales are now they are swimming machines folks their lungs in an adult whale are about the size of a small car so your little get gets or your hot Volkswagen Beetle that's about the size of a whale lung and they have two of them their skin or their dermis is the scientific name for it is incredible folks their, their skin actually absorbs the ocean water that they're swimming in and therefore there's zero friction on whale skin as they're moving through the ocean. They do, of course, carry uh, um, like whale lice and barnacles and other critters or parasites that attach themselves to the whale that create friction on the whales. But the actual skin itself does not create any friction on the whale. On the whale, so they can swim without. Imagine if you could reproduce that as an anti-fouling for your boat. That creates zero friction. Would be you'd be a multi-millionaire overnight. What do we got? I'm thinking guys, that's the pod that's been following us so. There. Is there how many whales over there? 
Yeah. Mm. So that could be our pot over there. One, two, three and two whales. I, I don't think it is folks. I really four three. The turquoise glow through the water. The water's so clear out here, but it's certainly not much closer. I came my course here. These ones are sort of swimming over the water. See it?
So we've got some golf pack and long under the bow there. They love that. So they get a free ride when they're sitting under the bow like that. The pressure wave the boat actually pushes them along. It's not that good. We're free riding as much as we're half of moving. So what's going on here with the whales, folks, is the migration. This is what's happening at the moment. The whales are drifting, not migrating at the moment. We've called drilling to stay here. It's like us, we go on a holiday. You don't really want to go home. They don't really want to go back yet, they're still loving these warm, shallow waters. When you think about it, uh, the waters in Antarctica at this time of year are around minus two, three degrees. And the waters here on the Gulf Coast are as far as minus two, minus three degrees. So these flowers, it's called milling staging, they just happen to be here in the Gulf Coast Bay. They're not charging south yet. They're still trying to have those last dates. We're still trying to get a boyfriend or girlfriend. So at this point in time, the wild are not migrating. What will happen, wild watchers, is because these wilds have not been eaten for four or five months now, six months, what will happen is they'll get hungry soon.
drew a black out of the tail. Wow, that's cool. A lot of the whales we see here on the Gold Coast boats have white undersides. That whale had a full black tail. And when we saw her breach earlier, she was black underneath as well. The southern hemisphere humpbacks are white underneath for purpose though. If they're like a camouflage, it's called counter shading. When the whales are under the sheet ice in Antarctica, if they're being hunted by packs of orcas, if they're close to the surface and the orcas are looking up, the underside of the whale is white, so it reflects the same as the sheet ice, so it's very hard to see them whilst they're swimming on the surface and, and the predators underneath them. Same as um, whilst they're black on top, when they're deep down in the ocean and the predators are looking for them, it's very hard to see the whales when they're black on top. Like I said, it's called counter shading and it is, it is a form of camouflage with a white underside. So these black underside whales, they're, they're more northern hemisphere. We get, uh, we get the black underside from the northern hemisphere whales. For our northern hemisphere whales, folks, they're competing with the anchovy fleet up there. Northern hemisphere whales survive on anchovy or, or maybe sardine. And uh, everybody likes a bit of anchovy on their pizza. So that's a bit of a struggle up there for the northern hemisphere whales. And even still, when the whales are caught feeding in Antarctica, when they get back, coming got no food from up here. Yeah. And so when they get back, this adult female, she'll, she could gorge feed up to a ton of krill per day. So there's a massive demand on the krill population. And we really need to make sure that as human beings there's a black target. You okay? we, we really need to be aware of that folks. Krill is marketed as a cure all for like arthritis, and joints, and you know, you name it, it's marketed, but it's vegan. Incredible animal, folks, they're just designed and they have a 
bold over the years. I used to be a land dweller, you know, like back in the day. I used to live on the land. You know, a big company and decided that they, that they started slipping into the ocean and their legs became a big tail and their, their nostrils, which used to be on the end of their nose like a big, like a big dog, their nostrils migrated from the end of their nose to the top of their head. Yeah, so they have evolved. But we're, we're, we're going to head around, guys. We're going to head in. Um, Tom and Bob have certainly, I'd say, baby. guys that's right you can hang on around the railings there all good guys as long as you had standing up holding on you're fine up here on the top on the mid deck but that bottom deck we need you guys to either go inside or come up to the mid deck we'll just clear that deck off and we will before we proceed in well that was pretty cool guys getting to show you that that was the part of the plan was hoping to come in and see the baby whale on our way back. Love it when a plan comes off. There they go. One o'clock, two o'clock, there's mum and bub. Wish the bubba all the best. See you bubba. Good luck. Thanks mum.